Hi everyone, welcome to the last video which uh, will conclude from 4 Additional Mathematics, Chapter 4, Indices, Certs and Logarithms. So in this video, we are going to look at solving problems which involves a loss of logarithms and involves indices, certs and logarithms. So we go straight to the examples. Example number one. Before we try to look at the real life examples, we need to master how to solve equations which involves the logarithms such all indices like for example this question a 3 to the power of x equals to 10. so previously when we have the indices which is an unknown here which is an x previously we learned that we can use this method like for example we have 3 to the power of x equals to 27 so we try to convert 27 to indices with base 3 so we know that 27 is actually equals to 3 to the power of 3 and by comparison we can compare the indices here which is x and the 3 here so x equals since the base is the same 3 and 3 here so x equals to 3 by comparison but now for this question we cannot do it using the previous method because it's very hard for us to convert 10 to indices with base 3 so in this case we have to use logarithm to help us whenever you have indices here the power here which is an unknown we can always use logarithm to help us to find the unknown. We will use logarithm for both sides. So we have log, to the, log base 10 of 3 to the power of x equals to log base 10 of 10. Okay, so we log both sides here. And why we want to use logarithm here? Because of the power law where we can bring the x to the front. So we can rewrite this as x log base 10 of 3 equals to log base 10 of 10. Then we can move log base 10 of 3, which is a number. We can move this number to the right hand side. So it becomes log base 10 of 10 over log base 10 of 3. Then we know that log base 10 of 10 is 1. Okay, log base A of A is always 1. So we have this. Key in this in your calculator and you get the answer, which is this. We'll try more examples. Now, again, we have indices here which consists of unknown x so when this happens we use logarithms to help us so we log both sides here we have log base 10 of this and log base 10 of this and using the power law we can bring 2x minus 1 here to the front we can bring x plus 1 to the front here it becomes this okay so keep in mind that when you bring 2x minus 1 to the front this is still a number here so you need to put a bracket because log base 10 of 5 multiplies all the terms inside here okay same goes to this side x plus 1 use the brackets here to remind you that log base 10 of 21 multiplies x log base 10 of 21 multiplies 1 okay it multiplies to both of the term all the terms inside the brackets 2x log base 10 of 5 minus so the 1 multi multiplies this you get this log base 10 of 21 multiplies x you get this log base 10 of 21 multiplies 1 you get this so now when you have an unknown x here you always try to group the terms with x with the unknown together meaning that these terms will move to the left hand side while this term here there is no x no unknown so we move it to the right hand side so now when you move here you get you group the unknowns you group the terms with the unknown x together and the rest you move here why is that so because we want to factorize the x okay so we factorize x 2 log base 10 of 5 is here log base 10 of 21 is here and after we we factorize this we can we can move these numbers here in the brackets all to the right hand side so you get this so we continue in the next slide so now after you gather all the terms without the unknown x here so you just key in your calculators log base 10 of 21 minus log base 10 of 5 remember it is in brackets because the whole thing here will be divided by all the terms in the denominator so always use the brackets to help you so you, you may pause this video for a while and you try now using your calculators key in everything and see well, if you get the same answer with mine which is 8.2309 one thing to take note here is when you read from the textbook, you'll find that sometimes they don't write uh, 
log base 10 of a number like for example this we have log base 10 of 3 in a textbook they sometimes they write sometimes they will simplify this as log 3 it means log base 10 of 3 c now we try to solve this again by finding the values of x so first thing we check whether they have the same base they have the same base so we don't have to change the base then the next thing since they have the same base we can compare these values to this value I repeat when they have the same base we can compare the values here and the values here but there's another two here so the first thing we do we need to use the power law we bring the two here becomes 9 to the power of 2 using the power law so now since there is no coefficient in front no more coefficient here then we can use we can compare okay so you can only compare when there is no coefficient in front and no other terms around so we compare this 3x equals to 9 to the power of 2 and from here i think it's easy you get 81 9 to the power of 2 is 81 divided by 3 you get 27 Shandy, we have this first we check the base they have the same base we don't have to change the base and since they have the, they have the same base and this is an addition we can use the product law so by using the product law you can multiply 2 with x minus 1 so you get this if you forget what is the product law you can refer to the previous video notice that we have two unknowns here so if we want to find the value of x here how are we going to solve this so remember when we learned the basics of logarithms we learned that we can convert equations the logarithmic form to equations in the index form so how are you going to convert this to index uh, equations in the index form by moving the m to the right hand side so we move the m to the right hand side it becomes m to the power of zero m to the power of zero is any numbers to the power of zero is always equals to one so this equals to one two multiplies x you get this two times negative one you get this then you can solve this easily okay by moving this here and then you get three over two Question e given that log base 2 of y minus log base 8 of x equals to 1 express x in terms of y so we want to find x in terms of y and the first thing we do we check the base now the base is different so we cannot combine we cannot use the, pro, uh, the division law for this first thing we do we change the base okay so the problem is when you have base with uh, different values one is 2 one is 8 should you change 2 to 8 or 8 to 2 actually you can use either one for me ch changing base of a big, bigger value changing base of the bigger values to a smaller value is always is easier so i'll show you how first we rewrite this okay so we want to change the base of 8 to 2 so we will use the formula so we use the formula which is this log base L of b equals to log base c of b over log base c of a again how to use this you can refer to the previous video so we want to change 8 to 2 so it becomes log base 2 of x over log base 2 of 8 so you have this log base 2 of x over log base 2 of 8 but for some calculators you cannot key in log with base 2 so what you can do to simplify this is you convert 8 to indices with base 2 like for example this okay so the rest is still the same we only changed 8 here becomes 2 to the power of 3 because 2 to the power of 3 is 8 why we want it to change it to base 2 because we want the indices here with the base as the same as the base of the logarithm why okay now you see when we move the 3 using the power law we move the 3 to the front here which is here log base 2 of 2 is actually equals to 1 that is why we want to change the 8 to the indices with the base which is the same as the base of the logarithm because in this part here it will it will become 1 so log base 2 of 2 here becomes 1 so we have this okay, so since this becomes 1 you have 3 for the rest you have the same base now so before we combine these two terms here we have to take care of the over the tree here so we rewrite this so that it's clearer for you to see that 
over 3 here actually means 1 over 3 log base 2 of x over 3 actually means 1 over 3 multiplies this this term and this term is still the same why well, I want to rewrite this here so that you can see that 1 over 3 you can bring it to the front using the power law so that it becomes the power of x which is this right so this you, you can bring it here becomes this using the power law and now since there is no more coefficient there is no more other coefficients here we can use the division law to combine these two terms so according to the division when you have the same base and there's a minus sign here we can combine this and it becomes y over x to the power of 1 over 3 so we go to the next slide now since we already formed this equation by bringing the 2 to the right hand side here it becomes 2 to the power of 1 so now we just move the numbers around to get x in terms of y so i move this here i get this since i want x in terms of y i have to move the other values here so i move the 2 i get over 2 and 1 over 3 is actually the, the third root so if i move it here it becomes the so since this is a cube root when you move here it becomes a cube of y over 2 and the final answer you rewrite this equation as x equals to y to the power of 3 over 8 now we try to solve the equations involving natural logarithm so here remember ln means log base e log with the base e we can convert this so that it becomes equation involving indices so if we re rewrite this the ln it is log base e and we can move the e to this side so it becomes 2x minus 1 equals to e to the power of 3 move negative 1 here becomes positive or plus 1 multiplies 2 move here becomes divide by 2 now you can use your calculator remember previous video i already teach you how to how to find the values of e so use the value of e to the power of 3 plus 1 and the values divide by 2 then you get this answer okay for this question the unknown that we are going to solve is the in, uh, is the power of the indices so when this happens we always have to use logarithms to help us then when the unknowns is the indices we use logarithm so before you use log logarithm we try to simplify this equation we move the 10 here becomes 15 over 10 15 divided by 10 you get 1.5 then convert this to the logarithmic equation uh, by using the log of, of both sides but since e is involved here we use ln so we use ln for both sides you have ln the ln of uh, e to the power of 2x and ln of 1.5 then using the power law we can bring 2x the front here you get this and remember the properties of ln of e always equals to 1 because ln here means log of base log base e so when you have a base e and the values here they are the same it equals to 1 anytime when you're not sure you can always use your calculator to help you you type in ln e and then you try to find the answer it will be 1 okay so this is 1 so this becomes 2x and then you just move the 2 here you get ln of 1.5 over 2 key in this in your calculator you can find the answers now we try to solve uh, some real life problems involving search indices and logarithms. At least the savings after n years, so n means the number of years, is this, is given by this, where n here is the indices. Determine the minimum number of years means we want to find the value of n for his savings to exceed 10,000. So we want to find the values of uh, n when the savings is more than exceeds means more than 10,000 so savings more than we use the inequality symbol more than here or larger than 10,000 and the savings is represented by this equation so I just rewrite this by using the e equation here 5,000 multiplies 1 plus 0 0.06 to the power of n where n is the number of years which we are looking for so now we try to solve the inequality so in the previous uh, examples in the previous videos as well we haven't uh, we haven't touched on logarithms involves uh, inequality so so this is a very important example here 
The method here actually is quite similar to the previous uh, method where when you have the unknown, which is an indices, we can always use logarithms to help us. So we try to find the logarithm for both sides here. We, but before that, we try to simplify this. You see 5,000, if we bring to the left and right hand side, we can simplify this. And 1 plus 0 0.06 can be simplified as well. So you get this, 1.06 to the power of n. 10,000 over 5,000 is actually 2. So now since it is simplified, we use the logarithm uh, in the next slide here. So we use log base 10. When you use logarithms here, we can use the power law to bring n to the front here so it becomes n log base 10 of this which is larger than this and again always see this as a value as a number a value which we can bring it to the right hand side so since this is multiplication when you move this here it becomes log base 10 of 2 divide by log base 10 of 1.06 clean this in a calculator and you will get this value and represents the number of years. According to this, the minimum value, which is an integer because it's number of years, for n is an integer which is larger than 11.89. So the smallest or the minimum integer, the smallest integer which is greater than this value, 11.89, is 12. So the minimum number of years is 12. So meaning that it takes at least 12 years for Ali's saving to reach 10,000. This is a very important thing to note here is since this, an, this is an inequality, when you move the values, you have to be very careful whether it is a positive value or negative value because it will affect the direction of the inequality symbol here. So if it is a positive value, there is no change to the inequality symbol. But what if this is a negative value? Okay? So this we will look at the next example where I'll show you a log which involves a negative value. There's no question, we just solve this. Okay? We try to solve this. Since the unknown here is an indices, we use logarithm. So we, we use logarithm for both sides and use the power law to bring the end to the front and now the next thing is we want to move this log base 10 of 0 0.7 to the right hand side. You key in this log base 10 0 0.7, you will find that this is a negative value. So when this is a negative value and when you move it to the right hand side here, the direction of the symbol, the inequality symbol here will change. This will affect how you find the values of n. And now maybe you will you will be confused. When do you have to? Uh, how do you know that this is negative or positive, right? So you can always use a calculator to check the values before you move the values here. Okay, always use your calculator to check this whether it's a positive or va negative value before you move it. If it is a negative, when you move it, it becomes uh, less than here. You switch the directions of the uh, symbol. And if you do enough exercise, actually you will find that when this value is less than 1, the logarithmic value of this will be negative. So when this value is 1, this becomes 0. So when this value is more than 1, the logarithmic value is positive. I, I repeat, when this value here is less than 1, for example here, 0 0.7, the logarithmic value here, the whole thing is a negative value. So when you move it, you need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. Now we go to the last question. In an electric circuit, the electric current that flows for t seconds, so the t is a time here, after its switch is turned off, is this. So when the switch is turned off, the value of the current I here can be calculated by using this equation. So now, A, calculate the current flow when the switch is off, calculate the current flow after 4 seconds, and how long will it take for the current to reach 1.5 amperes? So we start off with question A first, okay? When the switch is off, T is 0, because when it is just being switched off, the T started. 
right? So t is zero when the switch is off. So it means we just substitute the t here with zero. Okay, so now we have this, we substitute t with zero. Use your calculator. Actually, you don't need a calculator because four to the power of zero is one. So 24 times one is 24 amperes. This is ampere, the unit for current. Now question B. Calculate the current flow after four seconds. So it means that the T here now becomes four because after four seconds. So again, this is quite easy. You just substitute the T here with four. Use your calculator, calculate this, you get the answers. However, for the last question, how long will it take for the current to reach 1.5 amperes? So we look at the equation again. This time you are given the value of the current, which is I. So this is 1.5. We need to find how long will it take means we need to find the value of T because T represents seconds, the time. So now we substitute I with 1.5. We need to find T. Whenever the, the indices is an unknown, we use logarithm. I've been repeating this for like 10 times in this video. Yeah? So before we use logarithm, we simplify this. We move 24 here, move here. I, I switch the positions of the two sides here. And then I simplify this. We go to the next side. We use logarithm for both sides. So we have used logarithm of base 10 for this and logarithm of base 10 of this. Then we use the power law to bring negative t to the front here. And then we move log base 10 of 4 to the right hand side. Calculate the values using your calculators. You get this. So t equals to 2, 2 seconds. So this is the end of this video, which is also the final video for this chapter 4. I'll see you in the next chapter. Thank you, everyone.